Hey everyone, this is Paul Salved out in Bangkok, Thailand. Um, I'm the managing director of BBE Books. Uh, today we're going to take a look at um, converting an ebook, making an ebook, starting out with a like a source document. Now what we have here is uh, Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad. It's a public domain work I got from the good folks at Project Gutenberg. Um, and we want to turn this into an ebook. Um, the problem is uh, right now it's in a word processor and word processors are kind of like fixed layout. But an ebook, as you know, is a, a reflowable layout, meaning, you know, the it, it will scale based on the size of the device, which is important because people are reading ebooks on a lot of different size devices. So right now I've got this uh, this book in my uh, word processor. It's 38,000 words, about 55 pages, and it's broken into uh, like three parts. So kind of like three big chapters. So we want to get this guy, first we need to get this turned into some kind of HTML. So we do, let's start with a little bit of initial processing of this ebook. Uh, the first thing we got to do, um, you'll notice that the, the, um, the apostrophes and the quotes here, they're not curled. They're not like the fancy curled quotes. Well, luckily, Microsoft Word has a quick function that, way to do this. So you click under File. I'm using Microsoft Word 2010, but it's pretty similar for other ones. So you pull up uh, the Options bar here, and then you go to Proofing, Auto Correct Options. And what we want to do in the auto format is uh, straight quotes with smart quotes straight quotes with smart quotes the smart quotes are like the fancy quotes and then uh, under auto format as you type do the same thing straight quotes with smart quotes click OK this might already be enabled by default on your uh, word processor but let's just go through it real quick so all we need to do now is uh, we go under the advanced find here advanced find and then find and we're gonna start straight quote and then replace with another straight quote and then you just click replace all and uh, what you'll see is what happened is uh, the quotes actually got turned into fancy quotes as you can see and we can also do the same thing we just put a straight up and down hype uh, apostrophe with another straight up and down apostrophe hit replace all okay and that'll turn everything Microsoft Word will use its magic to turn everything into straight quote or smart quotes right okay next thing we got to do um, so as you know from the HTML tutorial there's three dangerous entities uh, that can break your HTML document uh, the first one is the ampersand sim symbol. So what we're going to do is we're going to do another uh, find and replace. But this time we're going to find this, the ampersand, and replace it with a special special HTML entity code, uh, which is ampersand amp semicolon. Make sure amp is lowercase. Okay, so we'll just replace that all there. And what you see we did is, uh, any time there was an ampersand in the die, I just changed it to uh, the special HTML entity. Now we want to do the same thing for uh, the less than symbol. Like a lot of times there isn't a less than symbol in a, in a Word doc, but it's a good idea to check. Because if there is one and it's not properly escaped with an HTML entity, it'll break your HTML. Okay, next up we want to go through the, the document and depending on how um, it was typed, uh, you need to make sure that each paragraph is on like its own line. Like see this right here? There's a, a, a hard break in between uh, um, within a paragraph, which is not good. So you can kind of get that fixed up like that by just deleting the line break. Now to turn on the paragraph warning, you click on this little guy up here. This turns it on and off. Um, so basically you want to go through your document and make sure there, uh, that all the paragraphs are kind of on you know, one continuous block of text with no uh, 
carriage returns in between. Okay. Uh, the next thing you want to do is um, maybe if you want to make sure you have the proper ellipses, like um, what we can do is, all right, for some reason this document, it has like dot, space, dot, space, dot for an ellipses. That's not good because in the case of an ebook, uh, the dots might all not show up on the same line. So uh, what we want to do is get that all fixed up. And we do that by um, replacing it with, you know, dot, 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 or in this case, dot, space, dot, space, dot, space. And we place it with the proper ellipses character. Now you can type the proper ellipses character by pressing Control, Alt, and period. Okay, so we'll just go through and fix all that. And see, now it's just like, it's actually just like one character it's not like six like it was before okay we also kind of want to do something similar for uh, n or m dashes so a lot of times like uh, if it's just written in like an ASCII format it'll just be like two hyphens we want to replace those two hyphens with an a proper m dash to get a proper m dash you hold down alt on your keyboard and then press zero one five one and then let go of alt and it'll show up so um, that's good. So we've got the proper M dashes now. That's a proper M dash. It's not just like two hyphens stuck together. Uh, next up, um, what we're going to be doing is copying this entire content into a text editor. And when you copy it to a text editor, you lose all like bold italics and underlined information. As you can see, there's a few italics words here. So what we want to do to preserve that bold, we're going to uh, put the inline styles on it right now. But first, uh, we got to make sure we turn off um, the smart quotes because we're actually going to be putting in straight up and down quotes that is actual HTML. Um, there's different ways to go about doing this process, but um, this is just kind of how we like to do it. Okay. So there we go. I've turned off smart quotes. Now what I want to do is I'm going to go to my advanced find feature and then I'm going to look for any bold text. How do I look for any bold text? Basically replace, just leave this line blank here on the find what. Go down to more and then uh, if you see here format then you go font and you look for, you just click on bold. So what's going to do? Word's going to find anything that's bold. All right, and I can show you, see how it, it, it's matching any text that is bold. So what we want to do is replace that bold text with the proper, um, you know, HTML inline style. So for me, I'm going to use span class equals B, and we'll define, uh, we'll instruct the B class to be bold later. And then to replace whatever you find in Microsoft Word, you use a caret and then an ampersand. And then close that off with a span tag like that. So what this is going to do is going to go find all the bold text and basically wrap span tags around it. So like that. There we go. Um, one problem is if you have uh, capital text like that, you need to click match case or you'll get like these big letters like that. So let's undo with control Z. Let's try that again. There we go. That's better. It didn't, uh, you don't want your span text to be capital because XHTML is case sensitive. Now we do a similar thing for italics because we have some italics text in here. And so instead of bold, I'm going to look for anything italic and just replace all. There we go. Okay. So uh, you can also do for underline. I don't have any underlines in here. I already checked. So I've got my span tags around everything now. OK, now that we've done a little bit of pre-processing on our, our Word document, uh, we can finally get out of this ugly, ugly program, Microsoft Word, and get it into a text editor. So all you do is, you know, Control-A, Control-C to copy. I'm going to pull up my text editor here, which is Notepad++, and then I'm going to paste it in here, and let's see what we get. All right. 
So we've got a, a few hundred lines of code here. Some ebooks can get up to like thousands of lines of code. And uh, I'm going to save this real quick as a file called like content.html or something like that. Okay. Now, w when you're looking at here, um, you've got some span tags that go on to a separate line. The idea is you want to make sure your paragraph is all on one line. Like this is all one line here. It's because I have the text wrap, word wrap turned on. If I turn off word wrap, you can kind of see. Now the span tag is spanning across more than one line, which is not good. So kind of go through and get that fixed up. Do a little bumper and fender work here. And uh, in this case, uh, the italics went across more than one paragraph. So we can just fix that up real quick. Okay. Okay. So we want to make sure our, our span elements are all enclosed inside one line. Because what we're going to do is we're going to wrap paragraph tags around every one of these lines. Okay. Um, now, what you want to do is you can see here there's like uh, trailing white space at the end of a line. Uh, that That's not good. That's unsatisfactory. You can kind of see it here. There's actually like two little dots when you pull that up. And um, a way to do this, you can run some regular expressions to kind of get that up. Or you can just use the BB design pad and do it really quick. And it'll rip out all the white space for you. It'll basically delete any tab. It'll delete any blank line and any uh, leading or trailing white space. So let's do that real quick. So I'm on uh, our company's website, BB Ebooks. You can get to the design pad under the developer section. So I'll just paste this in here. All right. And um, you know what I'm going to do, I'm just going to hit white space nuke. OK. Copy it, it out and paste it back into our text document. All right, good to go. And what you see is it just basically it just removes all the white space, right? OK. <coughs> So next up, we want to wrap paragraph tags around um, each and every line. Uh, to do that, you know, you could go through 204 times like a schmuck and wrap a bunch of paragraph tags. But I'm just going to do use what's called a regular expression just to do it really quick. So in my Notepad++, I hit Control H, Find and Replace. Um, what I'm going to search for is basically like this. Now, uh, you can read about our regular expression tutorial or you can just take my word for it. Basically, what this is doing, it's going to go through every single line of text and put at the front of the line the opening paragraph element and put at the closing paragraph element at the end of every line. Make sure you have regular expression correct here and just hit replace all. Okay, you can see that every line got a p tag, and the at the end of every line it got a closing p tag. So I'm going to turn back on the word wrap so you can see how that looks. So we're well on our way to getting this done. Okay, now we've got paragraph tags wrapped around everything, but um, not everything is a paragraph element, right? Like we've got the title of the book that's probably going to be an h1 tag so here you just kind of got to fix it up now i'm not going to wrap this in a span class equals b tag because i'm just going to tell the h1 tag to be bold with my uh, css uh, by joseph conrad i probably want that to be like centered or something so we'll come back and style that later with um, our, our cs our style sheet um, this one, uh, this little uh, I here, that's like the, uh, this book is broken into three parts. So I'm just going to make that an H2, an H2 element. And then uh, somewhere down here, I've got the two and three. So I just got to kind of scan through here. Oh, there it is. And turn that into an H2 as well. Okay. Uh, same for number three. Just turn that into an H2 element. And there we go. Okay. So right now I've got everything in paragraph tags except for um, the, the, you know, the headings, the title, and some stuff on the front page. Now, all right, 
So books, right, they should be like uh, have a first line indent and we'll style that with uh, later with the style sheet. But I want that first paragraph, that first paragraph to have no indent. So I'm going to make a special class for it. I'm going to call it text top. And then I want to make a drop cap. So I'm going to add a special uh, inline span tag, span element for that first letter. All right. Okay, so I've got class equals text top, which we will style later, and drop cap around just the first first letter. Now, keep in mind, uh, you have to make sure that the second paragraph clears the drop cap. So we'll make another class called clear it. Okay, which we'll of course just do later. All right, so going down here, uh, same kind of thing for each of these. Uh, span class equals drop cap. Now I want you know to include that opening uh, quote there. So I've actually got two letters in there. That's no problem. Okay. And then we'll just go to the last section and do the same sort of thing. Okay. There we go. Now when you have a drop cap and like. Uh, you float it. It's a good idea if there's a space after the letter, like in this case, like I looked at him. Uh, just put in a non-breaking space like that. Okay, that'll make sure that there's a space in between I and looked. And we're also going to add the class clear it here too. Now, okay, so we've pretty much got the HTML markup done. What we need to do is um, we want to have a, eventually have a table of contents whereby uh, the reader can click through and go to the title page or the first, second, or third section. So what we can do here, we can get our anchors set up. Uh, we do that by wrapping uh, div ID tags around it. We'll just call this uh, part one. Call this um, title or the title. You can name the IDs pretty much whatever you want as long as they are unique. Uh, we'll call the second section part two and the third section part three. Okay, so now we've wrapped uh, unique anchors around everything and that'll be instrumental as uh, when we make our table of contents. Okay, now let's um, let's try to add an image. I'm gonna add an image uh, right on this paragraph here. It'll just be like a, a picture of Joseph Conrad. I found um, the name of the image is uh, Conrad One dot GIF, and don't forget to put in your alternative text. Now. Um, a good practice when you add pictures is to add the uh, image or the the images height and width attribute. Um, so I can see here, uh, whoops, um, I can see here that uh, how big the file is. It's a one nine eight by three hundred. So what you can do is uh, just kind of right here. And yeah, this takes a while, but it's the best way to do it to prevent like the Kindle from resizing the images strangely. So I'm just going to say width equals 198, height equals 300. Okay, so I've got an image in there now. Uh, the next thing we need to do is um, we should probably put an HTML head uh, in like a standard template here. Um, I can get that from the BB eBooks website. Actually, it's pretty easy. Um, if you go to our developers page, which is just BB eBooks Thailand slash developers .html, you just go to uh, XHTML 1.1 boilerplate and just copy the stuff up here and just kind of send it up there. Okay, and then uh, copy the stuff on the bottom here. Put that on the bottom. And uh, now we can kind of check to see if this is a valid HTML document uh, by going to the Jigsaw Validator, or excuse me, the uh, the HTML Validator, 
and then uh, checking it out there we'll see how it looks see if we made any mistakes or anything like that okay we're good great okay continuing on uh, now we probably want to uh, work on uh, our style sheets so um, I've already got a link element up here I'm gonna call this one the EPUB style sheet okay you can call it whatever you want now you can there's all these kind of weird kind of little things about the Kindle and the Nook but if you just take our word for it and just copy something like our CSS from our developers page it life is a lot easier so you go to developers and then if you go down here CSS boilerplate and we try to keep this stuff updated you can just like just copy this and uh, you'll probably be fine um, so we're gonna make a new file just cut and paste that and save it as EPUB style sheet dot CSS okay there we go now there's a lot of stuff in here you probably don't need and you can always add more styles like down here but I'm just gonna check my styles so I've got an H1 and H2 I've got like some centered tags and a text top well let's take a look alright for H1 great there's some margin above it there's a page break before it that's okay uh, H2 yep about the same 1.5 M's font size it's bold that's good uh, class centered it's got a 1.0 M margin on top um, now for the base paragraph element I want it to be a first line indent so I'm gonna have a zero margin but 1.25 M's if you don't know what I'm talking about uh, go check out our CSS tutorial it'll help kind of explain some of the stuff same for the text top which remember was the paragraph element right after uh, a chapter heading so that 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 looks pretty good there um, this stuff's kind of superfluous because we're not going to use it but that's alright so now what you want to do is maybe have a look-see in a web browser just to see how it looks so you can uh, you know control O and open your file okay so how does this look alright the picture showed up that's good uh, there's a drop cap that's good uh, the indents are set uh, they got the this is what remember this was an h1 element these were centered this was an h2 element that's good so you just kind of want to go through here the italics are showing up okay um, you know just kind of give this a once over now I'm, I'm going through this pretty fast to uh, but you know the first time you do this you're probably gonna need to spend several hours kinda going through and seeing the mistakes you made it takes some time to get uh, proficient at this stuff but don't get frustrated and just take it one step at a time alright so we've got our book it's looking pretty good in HTML with the CSS styling now we have to get it into the actual EPUB format and to do that we need to start splitting up the files okay a lot of people use like software packages like InDesign, Calibre, Sigil, what have you to build EPUB files but I still think the best way to build an EPUB is is from the ground up because you know when you use a software program to split up the EPUB for you it, it does it can do some weird stuff and when you put together the EPUB package yourself it's the best way so to, to put together an EPUB package um, what we need to do is um, I'm gonna go into a, a directory I'm just gonna start a new directory let's call it EPUB heart or something okay now in the directory tree you've got a folder called meta hyphen INF that has to be capitalized and then you've got another folder called OE BPS okay within the OEBPS folder I usually prefer to have a separate folder for the images called images a folder for content and a folder for the CSS okay now um, make sure you're reading along in the EPUB tutorial on how to do this because it can get it's it's actually it's it's pretty complicated um, the first thing we want to do is get a file called mime type 
So the MIME type file, if you go to our developer section um, and uh, you go to like our EPUB boilerplate, okay, you've got this file called MIME type. So just cut and copy that, uh, set up a new file. Now, this is all it can say. And it has to say exactly that application size epub plus zip. It can't have a break like that. It can't have a space. And it has to be exactly 20 bytes. You look down here, it says length 20. That's correct. So you need to save that in your uh, the root of your epub directory and just mime type with no extension. See, by default, Notepad adds this extension. So we need to uh, sort of uh, take that out. All right. Okay. Okay, you got your MIME type. The next up, you have to have a file called container.xml. Uh, that's also on our website. You can just copy and paste that like so. Um, all right. You know, take out the spaces and everything. And this is all this file does. It basically just tells the EPUB where the the content.opf file is located. Hey, I did not design this specification, but it's just the way it is. All right. So the file has just got to be called container.xml, and it just basically is saying, hey, the content.opf package is in OE, the OEBPS directory, and this full path is relative to the, the the MIME type. All right. Stay with me. Okay. Next up. Um, we need to have we need to start building our content.opf file. The best way to do that, I mean, you could build this thing from scratch, or you could just like copy ours. You know, you're free to just copy and paste whatever you want from us. Okay, so new file. This is going to be called the content.opf file, and remember, it needs to be in the OEBPS directory. Content.opf. There we go. Now this isn't highlighted very nice. To to highlight it, you click language and then XML. Oh, there we go. Okay. Now don't worry so much about this stuff here. I'm just gonna take these extra spaces out. So DC title. All right. The DC. This is XML. This is the title of the ebook. We're gonna call it Heart of Darkness. Okay. You, this this can't be empty. It has to be something. Uh, DC language. This will be N dash US US English. That's fine. You can add other ones too. Now, okay, getting to the identifier. Typically, this can be an ISBN or what's called a UUID. Obviously, I'm not going to pay 150 bucks for an ISBN. So what I'm going to do is this is called a universally unique identifier. Um, the easiest way to randomly generate some identifier is you can just go to our website here uh, on the d under the developers page on the BB books developer page and then just go to like uh, the metapad right and uh, you can just generate like a random UUID here it's really uh, it's really useful uh, just click um, insert required metadata and what will it do it will actually generate a unique UUID which is a series of lowercase letters and numbers um, that there's like a one in bazillion chance that the same two ones will ever be generated so I'm just gonna put that in there like that so our book is now has a universally unique identifier um, so DC creator OPF role uh, with this attribute equals odd. That's the author. So that's just going to be Joseph Conrad, of course. Uh, publisher. This can't be blank. It has to be something. Uh, I'll just say BB books. That's fine. Uh, the DC date. This is the date it created. You have to do it in the format uh, like the year here and then a digit for the month and a digit for the date make sure the month is here for you British people I know you put the month on the other side, but uh, just uh, we'll put today, which is uh, September 5th 2012 just like that all right moving along with the metadata 
Uh, meta name equals cover. Don't take this out. This is some special thing for Kindle. Just trust me. Just leave it in. All right. This metadata down here is actually optional. Um, we'll say this is classic literature. And then um, the DC subject, that's like the keywords. Now, this metadata, I don't know if any of the big ebook stores actually use this stuff because they have their own proprietary way of doing metadata. But I'll just put it in here. What the heck, you know? Um, so you can have as many DC subject elements as you want. Uh, we'll just have two, like fiction and classics or something. Okay. Uh, moving along, DC rights. Uh, this is a public domain book, so it wouldn't be all rights over. It'd just be public domain. Uh, DC type. You can just leave that text. You know, to be honest, it's not even required, but you can just leave it in there. Uh, the source. That's like if this was originally a print book that you're basing it on. It's not really a print book, or but you can say anything here. I'll say Project Gutenberg, because those guys rule. I'll uh, give them a shout out there. Um, okay, DC relation, that's like if it's part of a series, I don't know, it doesn't really, these metadata specifications are confusing and people interpret the instruction different ways. It's, it's a big mess. DC coverage, that's usually worldwide. Um, that just defines how the rights apply. And in this case, it's a public domain and it applies across the world. Okay. Okay, um, before we get into the manifest section, um, <clears throat> we need to start building a, a few extra files here, and we also need to uh, split up our one massive source HTML file into a number of uh, smaller files. So first we'll start off with the cover page.html, and the only purpose of uh, this uh, chunk of HTML is just to display the cover. So we can go to our boilerplate, and just kind of uh, copy um, something from uh, the, 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 the HTML here. Um, like I said, all it does is it just displays um, the cover. And this, you cannot use this in Kindle. For some reason, the Kindle, like, uh, it, it won't accept, like, a standalone cover page. It's just the way it works. Anyways, so uh, what we can do, we can just copy this out. And what I'm going to do is um, make a file that just gets saved in uh, the root directory, in the same directory as the content.opf file. I'm going to call it coverpage.html. Um, as you can see from this HTML real quick, all it does is just display a file called uh, cover.jpg. <coughs> and um, when I look at... Um, my root directory here in the OEBPS, I've got the cover page.html. Well, I got to put in the, the actual cover, and I've already made it here. So I'll just go back to my OEBPS directory, put it there. All right. This is what the cover looks like. I whipped that up really quick, pretty spiffy. And um, now we need to start splitting up the HTML files. Uh, the easiest way to do this is to just take your source HTML file, bring it into uh, a directory I like to call content, which is where all the content and the HTML files go except for cover page. I'm just going to put it in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to save it as a bunch of different files. So save a copy as, and I'm going to label these sequentially for right now. Now you got to think about where you want to break up your, your uh, HTML, where you want to split it at. Um, keep in mind that every time you split an HTML file in uh, the EPUB package, a page break will be inserted. A page break will be inserted. So a logical place is typically at chapter headings and new chapters. Um, so right now I'm just kind of splitting up my HTML. I've got it in four chunks here. Okay, so chunk one is going to be, uh, it's just going to be this little piece right here, uh, starting from the H1 tag and just that first title page. That's fine. Okay, we'll just take that out there. Okay, that'll be content001.html. 
Now for content two, I want to have the the second or the first chapter. I just want to have that first chapter. You want to split up your uh, HTML files into a number of little pieces because uh, a it's it's better for the uh, um, ebook reading device. It doesn't have to parse like a massive HTML file. If you have a file that has like you know hundreds of chapters, yes, this takes time, but the the performance of um, the device parsing the ebook will be much better. Okay, so this is going to be content 002.html. It's just going to be that first chapter. Now I'm going to open up three and just do the second chapter. Okay, this is really easy to do in um, <coughs> Notepad++. It's a very powerful text editor. It's very nice to have. Okay. So this is content three, and now finally content four. Now keep in mind, I'm keeping the exact same uh, head information on every single file, and that just makes things a whole lot easier because um, we only have one CSS file for the whole thing. So if we ever need to go back and make changes to the styles, we just need to do it at one CSS file. Okay. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and delete the source one because I now have these four pieces. Now what we want to do is build our table of contents. Okay, when we build our table of contents, you'll recall that we put in these uh, ID anchors here. Uh, so part three on chapter three, part two, and part one, etc. cetera. Um, what you need to do it, when you uh, go and build your table of contents, uh, recognize that the IDs are all in different files. So you actually have to reference the correct file as well as the anchor in uh, your HTML uh, uh, table of contents file. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to use the same kind of heading as uh, the, these, uh, these content files. So I'm just going to take this out here, okay, okay, let me just uh, delete this real quick here, all right, okay, so uh, maybe we can put like an h2 tag table of contents, all right, and then uh, we're going to, I already made a, a class called TOC text, it's just, uh, it just specifies an indent, and then um, a ref, and then uh, you'll recall the um, the title ID in content one was called the title. So to reference that with the hyperlink would be content 001.html pound the anchor. There we go. Okay, we'll call that title page. Okay, okay, and then uh, for subsequent ones, um, we'll just call like chapter one. Okay, content two, and then you'll recall the anchor was called part one. Okay. And then there was uh, chapter two, chapter three. So three, and then two, and three. Okay, that's it. That's our table of contents. The tricky part is you have to make sure you reference the right HTML file and the right anchor or it won't work and you'll get an error during the EPUB validation process. Okay, there's our HTML TOC file. Um, so we go back to our manifest. Now um, the files we have include the cover page and we're called the content001.html. If you look at our directory tree it's in a folder relative to the uh, content OPF called content. So what we have to do in the manifest is say content slash like that. Th that way it knows that that's where the file is. If you don't do this correctly, you'll get an error. Okay, we also had uh, a content three. And make sure you change the IDs. All these IDs have to be uh, unique or you'll get an error. Okay. That'll be content four. Okay. Now, the CSS file 
Um, I'm going to put that in a directory called CSS. So I'm going to copy my uh, EPUB style sheet, go back here, go to the CSS, and copy it there. Now, be careful because in our content files, we actually um, reference it in the same directory. So you have to go back to all these files and change to the correct directory where the, the style sheet is. Now, um, if you looked at the directory tree, it's in the parent directory and then another subdirectory called CSS. So dot dot, that goes to the parent directory, which is OEBPS, and then slash CSS like that. And that, that, that'll uh, access the EPUB style sheet dot CSS, so it won't get um, mixed up there. Okay, we'll just do that for all of our files here, and then we'll be in business. All right. Okay, great. And you also might recall that um, in content two, we referenced an image here. Now, we could put the image file in the same as the content, but I like to keep images in a separate directory called images. So I'm going to copy that image from, uh, it's just called Conrad1. I'm going to go into our uh, EPUB directory, go to OEBPS, go to images, and copy it right there. Okay? Now, when I go back to the manifest, I have to make sure that I reference it correctly. Okay? Okay, there we go. Now the file was called uh, conrad1.gif. All right. And uh, the ID, it can be anything. In the media type, it's not an image JPEG. Um, you can get a list of the, the MIME types or the media types uh, from our website, but it's actually an image.gif, like that. Okay. And oh, also, we have to add CSS to that, and we have to add images to that. All these directories are relative to uh, where the uh, OPF file is. Okay, and that pretty much does it for the manifest. Now we have to go on to the uh, spine section. Okay, now we move on to the spine section. As, as you'll recall from uh, the tutorial, it's basically a linear play order of how the, the book reads uh, from start to finish. Um, the ID ref here, this attribute ID reference, it references the ID in the manifest section. So the ID ref in the spine section represents references the ID in the manifest section. So um, as you can see, it starts with the cover page. That's good. And then it goes to content one, which we'll call as the title page. And then it goes to uh, HTML, uh, TOC. And then it goes to two. And we've also got uh, three and four, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut and paste those guys. Uh, so three, four. So this is exactly how the book will read from left to right. Uh, the guide section, uh, it's really random how e-reading devices use the guide section. It's so random that uh, the IDPF got rid of this section for EPUB 3, basically. Um, so you've got cover page is the cover, okay, TOC is this file. In the beginning, uh, that's going to be the chapter one. Now you can change this. And actually for the Kindle, we're, we're going to, you'll see, we're going to remove this actually right here. So all right, that's pretty much it for our content OPF. One last piece we need is the TOC.ncx file. Now this is kind of like the, the metadata table of contents. It's not like an HTML table of contents. And it's this kind of uh, kooky uh, XML file that is thankfully going away for EPUB 3. Um, so to get it, you can go to developers page, go to the 2.01 boilerplate, and just kind of copy and paste this guy here. All right. So this is a good place to start right here. Okay, uh, make sure language XML so you can see the highlighting. Okay, what do we got? All right, we've got some weird XML stuff up here. All right, the meta content, um, this UUID, it needs to be exactly the same UUID that's here. So 
So I'm just going to copy and paste that from the content.opf and bring it to the toc.ncx file. Just a cut and paste job. There we go. All right, the, the depth, uh, ours is just a single depth. Uh, if you have a more complicated, like nonfiction, you might have multiple depths. You can go up to four. You can go up to four depths. Uh, I've only seen four level TOCs a few times on like more complicated type books. Uh, I don't know what this stuff is. I don't think the person who wrote the spec knows what this is. Just leave this alone. Just don't, just don't touch it. All right, the doc title, uh, we can just put Heart of Darkness. Doc author, that's going to be uh, Joseph Conrad. Okay. Now this is where, okay, now we're in the nav map section. The nav map section is where um, the individual entries uh, for the uh, N metadata table of contents or the NCX table of contents goes. Okay. Now all these, uh, this is the text as it will appear to the reader, and this is the, the basically the hyperlink to where uh, when the reader clicks it, it goes here. Now keep in mind, <coughs> this source attribute on the content element, uh, it's relative to the toc.ncx file. So clicking on the cover goes to cover page.html, that's good. Okay, clicking on chapter one, we should actually probably add another entry here uh, called uh, title page, title page. Now keep in mind these IDs, they can be whatever, but um, just make sure you don't duplicate them. Okay, and that's gonna go to content slash content 001.html because that's the title page, okay? Chapter one's gonna go to Content to HTML part one. Okay. Uh, content chapter three is going to go to content uh, zero zero three dot HTML part three, or excuse me, part two. Okay, and we just need one more nav point entry here, and. We'll go to chapter three, and that'll go to content four, HTML part three. There we go. Okay, you want to make sure like you didn't accidentally duplicate any of the IDs here, but it looks like we'll be okay. Now let's talk about the play order. All right, the play order is an attribute on each nav point, and it has to follow a linear order. I don't know why this is in here. It, no one knows why, but if you get the play order wrong, you'll fail EPUB validation and you can't sell your EPUB. So you got to get it right. So play order one, and then there's play order two. It just follows a numerical order, uh, five. And, and when you have like huge NCXs and complex, it's a real pain in the butt. You've got to like change every single one. Not very fun. Okay, and keep in mind, look at, look at, see how it's like a big O, but like a little P? The, the K, it's all case sensitive in this XML, so that's why it's best just to kind of cut and paste something from our website to make your life easy. So that's it for the toc.ncx, and now we're going to take it to um, uh, package it up as an EPUB. Okay, so let's just take a quick look at our files, give them a quick uh, once over here. Um, so uh, let's see. So I've got mime type in my root directory. That's the only file you want in there. And then meta dash i, you got this container XML file. Coming back to the OEBPS file, you've got uh, your OPF, your cover, a cover page HTML. Uh, your NCX file and then your content you've got all your content files plus the uh, TOC and then you got your style sheet and a CSS and all your images over here okay so now what we need to do we need to zip all this up into an EPUB as you recall from the tutorial EPUB is just a big zip file but you have to do it at the command line uh, so to access that you hit run in Windows and then CMD and I'll bring this over here Okay, so uh, I love DOS. This is like really old stuff right here. All right, so to change directories in DOS, you have to kind of CD slash, and then you can do like DIR slash W, and then I'm going to go to EPUB heart. Okay, DIR slash W. All right, so that I'm in the right directory. Great.
Okay. Now I have uh, my command line zip program. If you don't have it, uh, follow the link on our developer's website to download it. And uh, it's in a directory on my E drive under bin. It's called zip.exe. So uh, first thing you need to do is um, I'm going to go to the command line scripts on the BB developers website and just kind of read off these to uh, follow how to do this. So the first thing you got to do, you got to zip the mime type file first. So it's e colon slash forward sl or excuse me backslash zip.exe and then uh, the name of the file I'll call it part.epub and then hyphen d big x zero that's a zero not an o and then mime type and what this will do this will uh, add uh, the mime type to a new uh, zipped file called uh, heart.epub. Now we need to add the rest of the, the files. To do that, we run the command line again. E colon backslash bin backslash zip dot exe hyphen r big little r big d x nine. Uh, and then we got the name of we we zip up the meta inf directory and then the oebps directory and this will pile everything into that uh, heart dot epub file. Sorry, I forgot to put you're supposed to put heart epub first and then the the fields afterwards. So it'll just jam everything into this epub file. Watch this. Okay, it's all there. Great. Um, so you've got this uh, big zip file called heart dot epub and this should work but before we test it let's run it through the IDP PF's uh, validator to see if it works now the good folks at IDPF you go to validator dot IDPF dot org and you can upload an EPUB up to 10 megs now you can also run the EPUB validator on your command line but it's a little bit complicated so I didn't want to show it in the tutorial um, so I'm gonna go pull up my my uh, my my EPUB. I'm going to upload it to them and see what uh, how we did. See if there's any problems. Don't worry. Everyone gets a few problems the first time around. It takes a lot of practice, and uh, don't worry. You'll eventually get it. All right. So validate. We'll see what kind of errors we get. All right. No whammies. Here we go. Moment of truth. All right. The file the file's uploading. Ah, oh boy, hopefully this will hurry up. All right, what do we got? Come on, no whammies. Okay, well, we'll wait for that to uh, validate. Uh, sometimes the, the validator, it throws, like, errors, and they're kind of hard to interpret. But fortunately, they give you, like, a line number. So you can go to the line number in the file where the error occurred and try to see what you did wrong. Okay, while it's, it looks like the, oh, okay, the following problems, and see, I got like a ton of errors, a ton of errors. So what we need to do is go back. It gives you um, like where uh, the, the file, like, okay, content.opf. So file listed in reference element guide was not declared in the manifest. Okay, so something's wrong with our manifest on line 48. So let's see if we can figure it out. This is good. This is good because we can uh, debug this and figure out what's going on. All right, so this was bonehead right here, right? The guide set, it doesn't reference because it's in content. The HTML TOC file is in content, uh, the content directory, right? Okay, so we figured that out. Okay, what else we got wrong? Okay, um, da, 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 da. Something in the TOC, OEB reference resource missing in the package, something on line 37 of the TOC.ncx file. Let's see what's going on. Oh, same problem. We forgot to reference content like that. So there you go. You always make a few mistakes doing this stuff, which is why you kind of have to keep going back and figuring out what's going on. Okay, and we uh, did something wrong on uh, content2.html okay so here we've got to reference the, the the images and like the CSS file you go back to the parent directory with dot dot then slash 
images slash conrad one dot gif like this uh this validator it, it has no mercy it, it throws an error on anything but you really have to get it right or they won't uh, take it in the store all right we have another problem here um, part two fragment identifier so that means I referenced something in the HTML TOC and it was wrong see I said part two but it's really part three okay okay so what we can do we can go back uh, we can just delete the file here and we'll just rezip it up uh, real quick okay I'm just pressing the up and down key so I don't have to retype everything. Okay, let's go back to the validator and try again. See what kind of errors we get this time. Hopefully, you've just got to kind of keep doing this until you get a valid EPUB file. Okay, and while we wait for that, um, what we're going to have to do for the Kindle, get ready, we have to change a few things because the Kindle has its own kind of way of doing things and that's different from the EPUB standard, but it's not too much work. But uh, we'll walk you through the steps and see how it goes. Okay, great. Uh, this is what you want to see. Congratulations, no found, problems found with your EPUB. Great. Let's try opening it up with like Adobe Digital Editions or something and see how it looks. So, all right, over here is like the NCX, right? And this, it, it should pop open to the cover page. And then you got the title page. Uh, and then you got the table of contents. And you kind of scroll through here. Oh, great, the image showed up. So spend some time, you know, looking at your ebook. Make sure it's exactly how you want it, right? Um, so you definitely want to check that, like, you didn't mix up anything in the spine. Like, you know, chapter three goes before chapter two. That would be bad. Uh, feel free to click on the links here. Uh, click on the table of contents. Make sure that all works. And everything's looking pretty good here. So now what we want to do is we want to get our book into Kindle format. And the best way to do it is using Amazon's program called Kindle Gen. Now there's a few things about the EPUB source for the Kindle Gen that you have to change. Kindle Gem basically takes an EPUB and turns it into the proprietary Amazon format. But Amazon, you know, they're the big boys. They can do things however they want and not care about standards. So we've got to change a few things, actually. The first one's going to be in our uh, content.opf file. Um, you can't have this file called cover page. You can't like have the cover page as a separate HTML thing. So we're just going to take that out of the spine and out of the manifest. You also can't reference it in the guide. But um, this is okay to have the table of contents. Uh, this is what shows up uh, when the reader clicks on the little table of contents button in the, the Kindle. So make sure that's correct. That's very important. Uh, with the beginning, when someone first opens your file, for the first time, it'll go here. So in this case, content 002.html, which is actually chapter one, which is which is uh, that that's fine. Okay, um, okay. The metadata you don't have to change too much. You probably you should get a new UUID because technically the EPUB and the Mobi version shouldn't have the same UUID. But for the purposes of this demonstration, we'll just uh, leave the same one. Or maybe I'll change like I can change like one number there and now it's like a totally different UUID okay now go into the TOC file remember we, we can't have the cover page so we need to take that out um, also we change this to a one okay now we took that out no problem the, the the files are all the same however the play order is totally screwed up now so we have to go back and reorder all the little play order attributes like this. Okay, good. When you have like a hundred entry NCX, I assure you, it's not it's not a good sign. Um, okay, back back to the HTML. Okay, this is all fine in here, but actually we we, we need to use a different kind of style sheet because Kindle has kind of its own weird way of styling things. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to each and every one of these and change it like this okay okay 
And uh, you don't want to have files inside your EPUB package that you're not going to use. So I need to go into my directory and go to CSS. I need to take out this one. And uh, what I'm going to actually do is copy a Kindle style sheet from the developers page. Uh, if you just go to CSS boilerplate, you can just kind of steal this. Feel free to use this. And yeah, that's good. Okay. All right. Okay. And I'm going to make a, a new file called Kindle style sheet. Okay. Save as in the CSS, Kindle style sheet dot CSS okay great and the the Kindle styles are a little bit different and you can read about that in the CSS tutorials and the advanced tutorials there's like different queries for you know the Kindle Fire Kindle Touch and like older e-ink Kindles um, but um, for a simple um, a simple ebook you might be able to get away with using the same Kindle styles as EPUB styles. Okay. Okay, since we changed the name of our style sheet, um, we need to go back to the OPF file. Don't forget about that because we originally called it EPUB style sheet, but now it's Kindle style sheet. And um, we can change the name of the ID here, although you don't really have to. Okay. Um, now the only thing left is we still have this cover page .html file in our uh, OEBPS directory, so we're just gonna delete that. Okay, you can't have really a cover page HTML file in a Kindle. Okay, I think we've got all our packages here. Uh, just keep in mind the things we changed. We had to change some stuff in the OPF and the NCX. We had to change the style sheet and change all the references in here to the style sheet. Um, but other than that, we should be good to go. Now, now what you do, you build um, an EPUB uh, basically uh, just for the Kindle source and using the same basically command lines. I'm just going to call it Moby Source or something. And then um, what, once you get that, you want to just double check real quick on uh, the uh, you know validate it uh, for EPUB again just to make sure it works okay so we'll go back to the IDPF's validator and uh, check out our Moby source and this source EPUB is what you're gonna run Kindle gen on at the command line to see if it uh, to convert it to Kindle okay now while we wait for that to, to bug let, let me show you these uh, command lines the command line for Kindle Gen, my KindleGen.exe file is in a folder called bin. And you can just download this from Amazon's website. So KindleGen.exe. And great. Okay, no errors. Excellent. All right, now uh, the command line script for the running Kindle Gen, you can just get it on the developer's website under command line scripts. If you look down here. Oh, here it is. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, now the the Kindle Gen is another command line tool. It's not. Uh, it doesn't have a graphical user interface or anything. So you've got to uh, run it from the command line. And it's basically going to be e colon slash bin slash Kindle Gen slash exe, and then you do hyphen c one, which means like standard compression, and then verbose, which gives you like uh, it shows the output. And uh, here you put the name of the EPUB, mobisource.epub. Let's see how this looks. All right, you run this, right? And it just gives you this big, long uh, uh, data dump, basically. Um, you're basically, all you're looking for is just to make sure there's no errors. And at the end, it should say, the file format version is blah, and Mobi file built successfully. Great. Okay, now it's going to be in the same directory as the EPUB, the output Mobi. You can see here it's called Mobi source .mobi. So, And you'll also notice it's like massive compared to the EPUB in size. And that's because uh, the, the KF8 format and the older Mobi format gets packed in there together. 
Okay, so let's see how our, uh, our Kindle file looks. And you'll see when it first pulls up, uh, this is how it would look in the Kindle Touch. But uh, if you look at it in the Kindle Fire, and you got like your drop cap there, right? Now, since we specified styles to, uh, since you can't float uh, older Kindle devices, like we just made it like a big and bold letter. So we kind of cheated there. But kind of go through and just make sure this stuff is all squared away. And this is the file that you're going to upload to Amazon and, or give to your client to upload to Amazon. And that is it. You're done.